insurance is really one of those things where you often don't know what you're covered for until you need to make a claim. Hi, I'm Kylie Best from Welcome Home Rentals and if you missed our last video on landlord insurance and the misconceptions, make sure you check that out first. Just like you can't compare apples with oranges, insurance policies can be tricky to understand and to weigh up against one another. If you already have landlord insurance, chances are you took a policy out with the same building insurer that you already had. And that's entirely okay, if you're completely covered. But here's a few things to find out when you're looking for insurance. Number one, does the company specialise in landlord insurance? Like every business, there are businesses that cover everything and then there are specialists. It makes sense to do your research and to shortlist insurers with a core focus on providing landlord insurance. Number two, what is the policy excess when making a claim? If you're needing to make a claim on your policy, chances are you're already out of pocket with rent arrears or your home has suffered damages that you need to pay for. Having to pay an excess on top of the loss can really hurt if your tenant has decided to stop paying the rent. There are some insurers that do not charge an excess for claims on loss of rent, meaning that even if rent arrears are minimal, it's still worth making a claim. Number three. Are you covered for accidental damage as well as malicious damage? You might think that all damage is covered, and with some insurers it can be, but things like bumps and dents in walls are usually considered negligence, but not malicious, so you'll definitely want a policy that covers you for both. Number four, do you get to keep the bond for cleaning? Typically, if you have a tenant who has skipped out on their rent, they generally won't leave your house sparkling clean. That's where that bond is going to come in really handy, but only if your insurer allows you to use it. Many companies will apportion the bond to rent first, so if your tenant is four weeks behind with your payments, your policy is not going to be very helpful at all when there's a thorough bond claim required. Number five, what are the policy limits on claims? This is a really important question to ask. Knowing that you're covered for tenant damage doesn't tell you how much for. And thinking you're going to get a brand new garage door when your tenants leave the handbrake off can turn into a heartache if you find that there's a $1,000 limit on the policy. Number six, does the policy cover pet damage? Taking a pet bond is currently illegal in Queensland and with a much higher percentage of tenants having pets, you'll want to make sure that you're covered if Buddy the Beagle decides to gnaw away at your veranda railings out of boredom. So, how does your insurance policy stack up? Is it time for a change, maybe? If you enjoyed this video and know somebody else who might, don't forget what our mothers told us. It's good to share.